we were disenchanted by disenchanted. I'm Candace, and with me is my fellow waffle, Krista. Hey, Krista. Hey. The original Enchanted came out in 2007, and it was a joy. Krista, you love the movie, right? The original? I love the movie. I have shown it to, like, my parents. They loved it. It was just, like, an all-around, like, hopeful, good family movie. It's charming. And it's when, like, the world's really introduced to Amy Adams. This is before Frozen and Moana, where Disney wasn't doing self-deprecating humor at that time. Like, Frozen, Elsa's You Can't Marry a Man You Just Met, Anna. 2007, think Shrek has been out for a few years now, and they realize, okay, they made fun of us. Let's make fun of ourselves. So Enchanted works with all the tropes of Giselle falling in love at first sight and just being a Disney princess in the real world. She has all those animal sidekicks. She sings to animals, and they come help her clean like Snow White. She's going to marry the prince that she just fell in love with right away. And she just believes in happily ever after. That's your end goal. And that everybody gets that. And life should be going towards that. Thinking back in 2007, we were still coming of age. Still happy. Still happy. Still ignorant. Because we were ignorant, Krista. But we were learning at that point that maybe things aren't as simple as fairy tales. Learn the hard way, getting our hearts broken, all that kind of stuff. So I feel this movie came at like a really good time in our lives where we're like, happily ever after isn't easy. But it's possible. It's possible. So we get to Disenchanted, which was in development hell for a while, which it always feels like it's a red flag when something just can't get the ball rolling. And the whole cast is back, except the actress who plays Morgan. She aged out of the role because it has been 15 years when they're just doing 10 years. And it was disappointing. It was. I mean, I have a lot of reasons why it was disappointing. But I do want to say that Morgan did have a cameo. The original Morgan actress did have a cameo in one of the crowd scenes, which I thought was fun. And I do want to say that the actress they replaced her with looked a lot like her. So I do want to give them props for casting someone who was like a great replacement for her. They both look like they could be related to Patrick Dempsey. Speaking of Patrick Dempsey, he's barely in this movie. Robert, Giselle's husband, has a few scenes, but that's it. Really, the story is about Giselle and Morgan, her stepdaughter, or really her daughter. Yeah, and if that storyline had been stronger, maybe I wouldn't have cared so much that Robert really has nothing to do. His scenes just were pointless. Yeah. And the whole premise is, okay, so Morgan's getting upset because they moved to a new town and she's a teenager. Teenager's going to teenage. Giselle has a magic wand that she wishes things were better, things were more like Andalasia. She wakes up and everyone is acting like they're in a fairy tale. But nobody else but Giselle remembers what it was like beforehand. And I don't know, that bothered me. There could be a lot of humor with people waking up and being like, my cat's talking to me. That's weird. I think that would have been funnier. All of a sudden, characters like Maya Rudolph's character, the queen bee of the Mm -hmm. town, all of a sudden she's like, wait, I could be more than just like the so-so queen. I could be like a real queen of this area. Like I could actually take over. Instead, she just becomes murderous. I am having a little bit of Once Upon a Time flashbacks, as you do, as a former fan of it. I guess it's still a fan in a way. But there were a lot of other things I feel like they could have done. They could have made most of the movie 2D animated. Have Giselle and Robert and Morgan go to Andalasia and have that fish out of water moment. There is a moment Morgan does go to Andalasia to get help from Prince Edward and Nancy. Yes. They did make it better with Idina Menzel getting a song at least this time around. But the song is bad. The music's bad. I'm not a music yeah. person, but I could not remember a single song after I watched this. It was bad because the music is just so catchy in the first one. Like the big show-stopping number. Like, how do how you do show you her? Know. Love. You know, like, it just gets yeah. stuck in your head. The big dances and stuff were so great in the first one because they were that fish-out-of-water thing where here I'm, was the norm and it just didn't yeah. work. People were singing. And yeah, there were a lot of homages to other Disney movies. Morgan has, some like, an aerial moment. She has a bell moment. Those were but, fun. 
Yeah, but it felt very superficial. It did. Like most of the characters were superficial and they were just like there were too many like over the top characters because in the original it was just Giselle and maybe Pip. Like there were just a couple of characters in the original that were like over the top and kind of animated and stuff. And then they were balanced out by the rest of the normal cast. But then in the sequel, everything and everyone is like over the top and there's not enough to balance it out. Yeah. What did you think of Giselle going evil? It fell flat for me. I don't want to pick on Amy Adams. Like, I think it was more the script than her acting. Because there were moments when she would say a line and she'd give like a malicious little look. And that moment I would like. And I mean, she was in that movie about Dick Cheney where she played Dick Cheney's wife. So we know she can play evil. But it just seemed too much. Like I said, everything was over the top. And they just needed to scale it back down. It did feel like too much was going on. But at the same time, not enough of the characters were used. I'm mad that Giselle still didn't have her fashion line. Because at the end of Enchanted, you see her with Morgan and Robert. And she has her own Andalasia fashion line. Yeah, what happened to that? They didn't really mention it at all. She just has a baby and then she's a homemaker. Why not have it be about her girl bossing too close to the sun and just being stressed about the everyday stress of being a human. Yeah, that's like true. you could have had her business faltering and that's part of her ever after that's failing. Or she takes a break from that to be a homemaker and to raise her child. And that ends up not being what she thought it was, maybe. Don't just leave that plot point adrift. And I like the idea that she was working because before she was like, okay, I'm just going to get married and I'm going to go off and be a princess. Instead, she found something she loved to do, which was design dresses. And she was very good at it. And it looked like she was very happy in that very short scene. Looked like she was very successful. She had a huge workroom. And she had like employees, a lot of fabric. Our friend Jen sews and she can tell me like how much fabric costs. In New York City, too. Yeah. Okay, imagine Giselle having to do fashion week with a newborn. And that struggle. It was fine, I guess. It was fine. Rewatching it again, I was like, okay, let me separate myself. Let's see if it gets better. It didn't. It didn't. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to sit through it again. I don't know. One thing I noticed was that, like, it just lacked the magic of the first movie, despite the fact that it was all about magic. Because, like, the magic in the first was about, like, hope, love, belief in an ever after that Giselle brought into their lives. Second mm-hmm. is filled with, like, empty, meaningless magic that doesn't really inspire like, any of those feelings. Yeah, and honestly, most people agree with us. And I try not to base too much stuff off Rotten Tomatoes, except when it confirms my bias. Right now on Rotten Tomatoes, there's 99 critic reviews and it's at a 36%. So it's considered rotten and the audience score is 52. 52? Yeah, Yeah, I'm surprised. People are generous. I think there's something about Amy Adams that she is charming, even if this script fell really flat. Like you want to like her. You wanted her to do good in this role. Yeah, having the original movie be so important to us and just rewatching it so many times. Yeah, you're rooting for this. You're rooting for her because she was like, yeah, I want to play Giselle again. No, they should have let Enchanted just be a classic as mm-hmm. it was. I feel like this is going to fall into obscurity in a couple of years. People are going to forget that there was a sequel even. What could have been an interesting sequel was instead of it being about Giselle, it'd be about Adina Menzel's character, Nancy, in Andalasia. So it would be animated and it'd be about she ran off with this prince at the drop of the hat because she wanted the opposite life of what she had and what Giselle ended up wanting and like how she would get you, this like normal person would get used to living in this magical land. That's such a good premise, Krista. Thank Why you. are you hired by Disney? Yes, because so Nancy's like this business lady. She's like dating Robert for five years and, you know, about to be engaged to him. Sees her long term boyfriend fall in love with this princess. And then she sees this prince in puppy sleeves and is like, yes, I will take a slice of that, please. And goes down the sewer hole and is we're getting married with all our forest creature friends. And I mean, there are days when, you know, the monotony of life and all the stressors make you want to jump down a sewer drain and go off to Andalasia. So, like, I don't blame her. Krista, the Ninja Turtles aren't in there. Dang it. No, they're in Andalasia. They're the turtles. They speak. Oh, yeah, they can talk there, too. They can talk. 
And then you could have Robert and Giselle and Morgan be secondary characters. Well, at the, right before the climax of the film, Nancy would go back to the real world thinking maybe that's where she belongs before realizing she does want to be in Andalasia. There could be a really sad montage of her doing like normal 3D regular world stuff, just sighing while it rains. Sad music plays. Okay, Disney, if you want a mid cool, call us. We got you. We got you. All right, wait, any other opinions you got, Krista? Don't watch it. Go back and watch Enchanted. So that's Chris's last take on it. So we want to know, what did you think of Disenchanted? Are we being too harsh? We do have our moments. Leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you.